It's so important to be able to combine arts and science. You know, they're completely different, but they don't have to be. You can come together to, you know, to work towards one common good or you know, one good cause. We have been collaborating with some art students at Kwantlen Polytechnic University and UBC to create artistic sculptures so that we can use for a research project. Where we're basically looking at how effective artificial reefs are as habitat for rockfish specifically. Art, I think, you know, a lot of the time, it's about expressing oneself or you address the issues within the society. So in this case, I think because um, we have this global issue of uh, the environment, global warming, and it's affecting everything and how we consume our food. All I know about rockfish, it's, it's the food. So, you know, to learn all of the way how they live, how they grow, how it's impacted with the environment, um, it's really an excellent uh, opportunity for me and my students to learn. Rockfish are important for a couple of reasons. In, when it comes to the ecosystem, they're right in the middle of the food chain. So animals like seals and sea lions that everybody loves, they like to eat rockfish. But then they also eat smaller invertebrates and smaller fish, so they really help to keep control of the populations below them. If you take one link out of that food chain, then everything gets out of whack, everything gets wonky, and these animals start having to look for other sources of food, which is not what we want. We want everything to be in balance their populations had a drastic decline in the 1990s and haven't really rebounded since. So because they haven't really rebounded, we're trying to think outside of the box at other ways that we can you know, help these fish that are really important to the ecosystem. So one thought was why not combine art literacy with conservation rather than just dumping concrete blocks or tires. If we made it more engaging, more interesting for the public, it might entice them to want to be a part of conservation, care more about rockfish, and find ways to get involved. I've always been interested in public art, but I've never really thought that public art could be both for humans and animals. Going through the learning phase with the aquarium and um, understanding more about what's in our ocean right in front of us, so we had to kind of work with our artistic side, but also keep in mind the functionality of the fish that will be living in the habitat. So not letting our artistic fly too much, but with a little restraint. Hopefully, you know, when people looking at the work, they may not at first understand what this was about. By look, but by looking at it, they started to ask questions. And I think in art creation, it's all about question. You find a question and you try to search for an answer. I believe it will bring people's awareness about this whole issue that we all dealing with worldwide. After the sculptures go in the water today, we're going to be starting our monitoring. So that involves uh, staff at OceanWise as well as the public, public divers, recreational divers. Um, we invite everyone to come on out and go onto these sculptures and let us know how many fish they're seeing, other species that they're noticing on these sculptures, take video, take pictures, send it back to us. Because the more information, the more data we have, then the better we can understand how valuable artificial reefs are as a habitat. So this is going to be an ongoing monitoring project. There really is no end date because we might see fish in a month from now. It may take a couple years from now. We don't know. That's the fun thing about science. Here we are with our finished pieces mounted and ready to go into the ocean. It's, it's really been an amazing journey and we're really really fortunate that we got to be part of this. It's so cool I can't even describe it. <laughs> it's finally there and I can't wait to go see it again when I go scuba diving.